sorry. It's not a friend of mine, but I'm very lucky to have good friends, all right? Friendships that have lasted many, many years. Friendships that have stood the test of time. My oldest friends started in primary school back in the day. I've known them for more than 30 years. My best friends till this day, Shane Botha and Craig Chulivas. Those friendships have stood the test of time because of the secrets we keep for one another. Like how we played a game of Soggy Mari together, but more on that later. The friendship didn't start off easily because back in the day, society was segregated by the government, so it took a lot of understanding one another. Like the first time I went to a sleepover at Craig's house. What an experience! I discovered that there's a huge difference in houses. I told Craig that I live in a four room and he was like, wow, you guys have four bedrooms. We only have three bedrooms. I was like, no, Craig, the whole thing is four. There's a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, and a lounge. Well, you, you can't really call it a lounge if you still owe Joshua Daw for furniture. You don't lounge on debt. You sit up straight. So we called it a sitting room. We were poor, and our house was small, but our home was filled with love. Love we were forced to listen to every night because of our thin walls. <laughs> this was the first time I discovered that children have rights and it's okay to use them. Craig had a say in the matter of what was for dinner. Like in a restaurant, dude was asked what he wanted for dinner. It wasn't the normal everyday chicken like at my house. My family basically lived off chicken. <laughs> Meanwhile, Craig, didn't eat chicken off the bone. I was like, hey man, what do you, what the hell do you mean you don't eat chicken off the bone? The bone is the best part of the chicken. I should know because my family eats the whole chicken. We start with the head, popping the eye out of the chicken's head. Like, yeah, that's the good stuff. Which is actually quite a skill. Because when the chicken head is cooked, the eyelids always cook firmly shut. So you really got to suck on it in order to get it out. It's like drinking peanut butter out of a straw. Then we go down to the chicken neck, okay? Oh, a word of advice. Never take a female member of my family out to a date in Nando's. They will embarrass you to no end ordering a goda chicken with some don't chop the neck off booty. <laughs> Keep the neck on. Yeah, just dip it in hot. <laughs> At the end of the meal, there's nothing left on the plate except a grey pulp. This is a <laughs> <laughs> then we top it off with the chicken feet, which you gotta eat last because they come with that toenail. It's a built-in toothpick. <laughs> Now, live chickens in black neighborhoods are terrified of black people. Because there's live chickens in almost every black neighborhood in South Africa, but nobody knows for sure whose chickens they are. You'll never hear somebody saying, oh, there goes Mkiza's chickens. No, they just roam the street, consuming a diet of sewer water and poultry cats. These chickens are so terrified of black people, they walk around like this. The thing that took my friends and I time to understand one another was the fact that Shane and them just couldn't understand what the hell was going on in the country at the time. Shane would be like, Trevor, I don't understand why everyone's always fighting. Look at us, we're the same. We have the same stuff even. Look, we go to the same school, we're in the same class, we have the same uniform and the same lunch. I'd be like, okay, wait. Shane, stop right there. The same lunch. <laughs> Take out your lunchbox, Shane. He's like, yeah, sure, here it is. I'm like, ah, you see, Spider-Man. He's like, yeah, you like Spider-Man too. I'm like, yeah, you're right, Shane. I like Spider-Man as well. But open up your lunchbox. He opens it up and he's like, yeah, you see. I'm like, four compartments. That's the same size as the house I live in. <laughs> okay, what's, what's that over there, Shane? It's a Nachi. That's a Nachi. Why is it naked, Shane? He's like, oh, that's cause my mom peels it for me. I'm like, wow. 
There is no black mother who will wake up and peel her kids' nachi for them. I'm going to put this out there. And if I get in trouble, so be it. Nachis are for weak people. I'm serious. In my house, we didn't respect nachis. I mean, come on. A baby could peel a nachi. No. In my house, we ate oranges because we knew that if you wanted vitamin C, you had to be willing to fight for it. Fight me for my juices. When I see someone walking with a nachi, I'm like, just like, that guy. That's a guy who's given up on life. Sorry, I take my fruit very serious. Shane loses his patience with me and says, oh, let's see your lunch then. I pull it out and he's like, wow, your mom gave you two liters of ice cream for lunch. I'm like, no, open it, Shane. <laughs> Dumbass opened it incorrectly. Two chicken feet popped out and he went whiter than I ever thought he could be white, okay? What he didn't understand is that my lunchbox was not the normal lunch of Sammy's naked nachis and juice, but in actual fact, last night's supper. And if you know anything about your lunch being in an ice cream container, you know that ice cream containers don't have the structural integrity of a Spider-Man lunchbox. Traveling from the hood to the suburbs via two taxis and a bus will mess up the contents of that lunch which is made up of rice, pumpkin, spinach, the chicken that survived my drunk uncle. Uh, so it kind of has like a brandy smoked bite mark in it. And then of course, beetroot. When Shane regained consciousness from seeing the chicken feet, his first question was, why was everything purple? Uh, Shane, that's cause of the beetroot. It's a little known fact that there is an underground fight club that happens when one closes the lid of an ice cream container full of leftovers. And although the rice tries to put up a brave karate fight, it can never match the smackdown that P2 puts down. So basically that's the story of my two best friends, how we met, how we grew up, and how in actual fact we are the same, which we proved because earlier I was telling you about how we played Soggy Mari. We proved how similar we are because basically this is how Soggy Mari is played. You put a Mari biscuit in the middle and then a bunch of guys, they stand around in a circle. And the point is, you've got to and you've got to first and you've got to onto the Mari biscuit, all right? Because the last person left having not has got to eat the Mari biscuit. It will crumble in your hand and then like all your friends is trickling down your arm and you've got to you got to lick it up. It's a matter of pride. I never lost, personally. But that was a catch-22 because I always came first. Today, I'm a premature ejaculator. Anyway, thank you very much. Good night.